Matthew, it's great to have you here in Barcelona with us. Thank you so much for joining us. No, good to be here. One of the key topics of conversation has been around talent retention and what the situation is at the moment in this industry with both attracting the best people and, and keeping them in businesses. What would you say is the situation in this sort of post the initial impact of COVID period? Sure, I, th I think when you first look at how to attract talent, um, certainly post COVID, I think that we need to break this down into to two really main points. Uh, the first being that you need to make the, the interview process and what that looks like not short and sweet. You know, we're seeing uh, candidates with five or six um, offers on the table at any given period of time. And certainly you need to make yourself stand out by being quite snappy to market in, in that regards. Uh, the second part is being flexible. You know, post-COVID, I think a lot of candidates want that flexibility in terms of maybe remote working, maybe working from other locations. The flexibility that they were afforded during COVID and they'd like to remain, you know, that being the case. So I think that's really how you go about attracting it. Um, now, when it comes to retaining, I'd say, you know, really you have to look at the progression on offer. Um, you know, people don't want to look elsewhere if the progression is on offer internally is something that, you know, certainly they can rely on. And that's something that's, I think, very important. You talked there about where you look for that talent as well, and perhaps there has to be a different approach in terms of, of looking across the board at, at different areas that people have transferable skills that they can bring to you. Yeah, absolutely. And it's certainly something I think we've seen in, in the crypto space. Um, you know, certainly a very new area within quant finance and a growing area, I would say as well. But certainly, you know, because of that, the newness of, of the area, you are looking at other asset classes such as FX, electronic trading platforms, where those transferable skills are really in play. Um, and certainly a lot of crypto funds have come to us and said, look, you know, that's really what we're looking for here due to those transferable skills. And it's certainly something that I, we expect to continue going on to the, the new year for sure. And what do companies need to do? Because in the past, naturally, you know, if you were looking for a job, you'd be the one sort of selling yourself. And it seems to have turned on its head, doesn't it? Now it's the, it's company's responsibility to make themselves appealing to this talent. Yeah, absolutely. And I, th I think it's certainly something, you know, people do look for a lot more um, in terms of the branding of a firm and, you know, what kind of diversity and inclusion policies they have as well. You know, we, we had a certain situation in the earth recently, you know, where candidates were coming to us and saying, look, what is this firm doing about sustainability? What are they doing about ESG? And all, all of these kind of big branding issues that are, that are very prevalent these days. So I think it's certainly that that onus has shifted onto to the clients, you know, to make themselves out there and, you know, make people aware of what they can offer. So what would you say would be the key takeaways for, for businesses listening to you perhaps speaking here this week to take away and, and put into action and, and what do you expect, how do you expect that environment to, to change over perhaps the next 12 months? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think because it is such a competitive market, you know, you really have to make yourself stand out. And one thing that we always tell our clients is, you know, do offer the opportunity throughout every process for, for every candidate to ask as many questions as they, they want to or, or feel they need to. Uh, throughout the process, but also, you know, when offering somebody a position, it is to make it as interesting as possible for the long, the long future. I would say, um, you know, we, we see a lot of instances where individuals come into a, an institution, you know, after one or two years, do then move. Um, that is because they're not offered the right kind of long-term project. So, something we'd definitely encourage. So that's what companies need to do to, to stand out. Where do you expect to see the most hiring happening in the next 12 months? Sure, um, it's a question we get asked actually quite a lot. Um, I think one of the well, the main areas within the buy side, uh, we expect to see a lot of growth in systematic credit and systematic commodities, um, just with the amount of data that's out there now and the, the advancements in the platforms. I think on the sell side, especially within investment banks and you know, what they're looking like for the year ahead, the, the surge in equity trading volumes has been massive this year. Um, on the back of naturally quite a difficult year for equities uh, last year, we're expecting that to, to bounce back strong. Great to speak to you. Thank you so much for sharing your insights with us today. Cheers, thank you.